Hello students, this is Mr. Allen and today we're going to look at section 7.4 which is similarity in right triangles. Now guys, I'm going to start this video off by just telling you that I think this is one of the more challenging sections. So I would highly recommend that you watch this video in its entirety and definitely um, take some extra time this week to practice these problems. Our objective here is that students will be able to find and use relationships in similar right triangles. So here's the deal, and this is a typical problem with everything that we're going to do today. It turns out that if you draw the altitude of a right triangle, and so let me show you what the altitude is of this right triangle. So this segment right here, KM, is called the altitude. And what an altitude is, is it goes from the vertex of a triangle, that means a corner, and then it is perpendicular, you can see here it's perpendicular to the opposite side. Okay, so that's one altitude, turns out that they have three altitudes. So now here's a question, how many triangles do you see in this picture? Well the answer is, is that there's three. There's this small one here, there's this medium sized one here, and then of course there's the original big triangle, so there's three. Three triangles. Now we need to take this information when we go into the next slide. So here is probably the most important overarching theorem of everything that we do even though this one isn't used a whole lot in examples. So it turns out that if you draw or construct the altitude of a right triangle it is going to produce three similar triangles. That's what this theorem says, theorem 7-3. The altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle, remember the hypotenuse is the side opposite the right angle, divides the triangle into two triangles that are similar to the original triangle. In other words, and we're, we're looking over here now, triangle ABC, that's the big triangle, is similar to triangle ACD, that's the small one. Triangle ABC, again, is also similar to triangle CBD. And finally, the small triangle is similar to the medium-sized triangle. So we're now going to use all the things we've been using in terms of similar figures to solve problems. But before we do that, let's just remember that similarity means that they have the exact same shape but not necessarily the same size. In other words, the angles, the corresponding angles are congruent, but the corresponding sides like AC is to DA as CB is to DC. They're proportional. All right, so let's look at an example here. So let's write the similarity statement. Uh, <clears throat> sorry, what similarity statement can you write relating the three triangles in the diagram? So what I would recommend that you do is that you draw the three triangles separately. Of course, you've got the original one, so I'm not going to probably draw it again. And by the way, the original triangle here is triangle X, Y, Z. That's the original one. I'll call it the big one. And then you see this little one here. So the way I'm going to draw this little one is I'm going to draw it in the same orientation as the big one. And now this triangle, the right angle is at W. And then let's see here, the, the skinny point inside, that's going to be Y. And then this is going to be X. So this is the small, similar triangle. And now I'm going to draw the medium one. So let's do the medium. So the medium triangle, that's uh, the one that's in the, the left there. Uh, again, we want to. I'm going to draw it with the same orientation as the original one. So now this one's medium sized. So the right angle is again at W, and then this is going to be Z, and then this is going to be Y. So I claim that all three of these triangles are similar. They have to be due to this theorem 7.3. So now we're going to write a similarity statement for the, all three of these triangles. So I'm going to say that triangle XYZ, that's the big one, is similar to triangle, and I'm going to go ahead and let's do the medium one, medium one next, uh, and that's going to be YWZ, 
and that has to be similar to triangle, and then I'm going to do the small one, X, W, Y, okay? So that's your answer. Now keep in mind, all of the corresponding angles are congruent. I mean, clearly you can see that angle W, angle W, and angle uh, X, Y, Z are all right angles, so those are all congruent, and then the corresponding sides are going to be proportional. All right, so this is where things get a little bit dicey, a little bit harder. We're going to, have to talk about something that you've probably never heard before. This is called the geometric mean. And it turns out that the geometric mean of two numbers, now the mean of two numbers is just the average. So if I said, what, and let me, let me pick a super easy example. What is the mean of 6 and 10? Uh, actually, let me pick an easier one. What is the mean? I'm going to make it easier still for myself. Uh, maybe. <laughs> Let's do this. So i got to think here carefully. Um, boy, this is harder than I thought. Okay, we'll just do 6 and 10, which is what I said. What is the mean of 6 and 10? To do the mean of 6 and 10, you would just do 6 plus 10 divided by 2. So that gives you 8, okay? That is the mean. Mean is another word for average. The geometric mean is defined using these three formulas down here. And I'll tell you that for the sake of this class, most of the time we'll use this proportion. Turns out the geometric mean of these two numbers is x equals the square root of 6 times 10. So that's going to be the square root of 60. And just to let you know, the square root of 60, I'm going to use my calculator here, is approximately approximately 7.4, oops, 7.46. Okay, so you can see that this answer up here for the mean and the geometric mean are different. Okay. So that's how we're going to do the geometric mean. Another way we could have done this geometric mean is we could have said 6 is to x as x is to 10. And when we cross multiply, you're going to get x squared is equal to 6 times 10, which is 60. Then, of course, you have to do the square root of 60, which gives you the same result. So you can see that these two guys kind of make sense. In fact, you can even see how that formula comes into play there. The geometric mean. So example two, what is the geometric mean of 6 and 15? Now, I just did the geometric mean of 6 and 10. So all we're going to do is we're going to do x is equal to the square root of 6 times 15. If you don't like that, you could say 6 is to x as x is to 15. And you can solve it. Either equation will work. So this means that x the square root of whatever 6 times 15 is. And again, I'm going to use my calculator so I don't make any careless mistakes. I get 90. Huh. I don't see 90, though. A is 90. Or I see 90, but not square root of 90. I need the square root of 90. Oh, yeah. Remember, 90 is the same thing as 9 times 10. And the square root of 9 is 3. So it's 3 radical 10, if you guys remember that from Algebra 1. So that's called uh, rational, or not rational, that's called uh, simplifying radicals. So anytime you have a perfect square, this is a perfect square, you can square root that out. So you get 3 radical 10. So that's the answer. All right, so I'm going to give you two the two final ideas for today, which are two corollaries, and they're both corollary just means it's a mini result from Theorem 7.3. And so here's that next one, and these next couple examples you really want to pay careful attention to. And here's what this one says. The length of the altitude of the hypotenuse of a right triangle, remember that's this here, is the geometric mean of the lengths of the segments of the hypotenuse. So what we're talking about here is this length, and this length here. So look down at our little example here. So what I'm saying in this particular form, and by the way, here's the 
Here's the formula that you can use based on this diagram. But what it's basically saying is, is the length of this altitude, 4, is the geometric mean of 2 and 8. In other words, 2 is to 4 is 8 is to, I'm sorry, 2 is to 4 is 4 is to 8. When we cross multiply here, you get 16 is equal to 16, and that's true. Corollary number two, this one's similar, but it's a little bit different. In fact, I'm just going to, I'm not going to read it to you. I'll let you read it. But now what we're doing is instead of talking about the altitude, we're going to just talk about one of the legs of the big triangle. In this case, one of the legs is two. It turns out that that is the geometric mean of one and four. So Maybe I, maybe I should read the corollary now. The altitude to the hypotenuse of a right triangle separates the hypotenuse so that the length of each leg of the triangle is the geometric mean of the leg of the hypotenuse and the leg of the segment of the hypotenuse adjacent to the leg. That's really worrying. Here's what it's basically saying. It's saying that this leg right here is the geometric mean of AD and AB. Another thing it's also telling us, and I'll do this in uh, green now, is that this leg right here, the leg of the original tri or, uh, right triangle, the length of CB is the geometric mean of DB and AB. All right, so let's look at an example. Okay, and I've got, um, I think I got one more example after this and we're done. So we have a right triangle with an altitude. Okay, so this segment right here is called the altitude. We gotta find X and we've gotta find Y. So let's go ahead and start with X because that's based on this last corollary that we just looked at. So what that corollary tells us is, is that X is the geometric mean of this length and this full length here. In other words, I could say, and I'll do this, let's do it in green, we'll stay in green. I'm going to tell you that 4 is to x as uh, x is to 4 plus 12, that total length. Now you could also write 16 there, but that's, that's what you would do. Okay, so now we're going to get 4 is to x as x is to 16. Now we're going to cross multiply. We'll get x squared is equal to 16 times 4, which is 48. That's not right. 4 times 16 is not 48. I'm sorry, it's 64. Let's get that right. Uh, 3 times 16 is 48. Sorry about that. It's 64. Oh, that's good. So now when we do the square root of both sides, we'll get x is equal to 8. So that tells us that this length here is 8. So x is 8. We figure that out. Great. Okay. Now, let's go ahead and find what y is. In fact, let me erase that 8 now. And in fact, I'm going to erase all the green stuff. We're going to just go with red now. Okay, so now I'm trying to find y. That's this segment here. It is the geometric mean of this number and this number. So now I'm using corollary number one. This was based on, the first one was based on corollary two. This next work is going to be based on corollary number one. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to say that four is to y as y is to 12. So we're going to cross multiply again. We're going to get y squared, 4 times 12. That one's 48. There's the 48. I knew there was a 48. So uh, anyways, now we're going to do the square root of that. Now, guys, the square root of 48, that's not a perfect square. So you got to try to find the biggest perfect square that's in there, which turns out to be, I think, 16. So this is the same thing as 16 times 3. I just mentioned that a second ago. So y is equal to 4 radical 3. That's the exact answer. If you want the approximate answer, I'll do that in blue. Uh, let's see what that is. And it's 6.9... 
Oops, I said it right, then I wrote it wrong. 6.928. Okay. All right, last example. So I thought we would end with an applied example, in other words, a real world example. And I'm going to highlight something right now. I'm going to just kind of highlight this triangle. So you guys got to be looking at this triangle here. So you see that triangle. And furthermore, I'll go ahead and highlight uh, there's the altitude. And it says you are prepping for a robotics competition using the, the setup shown here. Points A, B, and C are located that, so that A, B is 20 inches. A, B is perpendicular to B, C. Point D is located on segment A, C so that segment B, D is perpendicular to segment A, C. And the length of D, C is 9. You program the robot to move from A to D and to pick up the plastic bottle at D. How far does the robot have to travel from A to D? So we want to know this distance here, x. And the only thing we know is we know that that is 20. We know that the length of AB is 20, and we know the length of CD is 9. Okay, so we got to do a little bit of work here. Let's do it in red. So this is a leg. And then we've got information about the hypotenuse, so that means we're going to use corollary number 2 that we just talked about. So we're going to say um, that x is to 20 as uh, oops, x is to 20 as 20 is to, now we're going to do this whole length here, and that's going to be x plus 9. Okay. So here we go. we got to solve this as algebraic. This one's going to be kind of a harder example. But we'll get it figured out. We're going to cross multiply here. So we've got to take x times x plus 9, and then 20 times 20, which is 400. Now we're going to distribute. So that's going to be x squared plus 9x. Let's go ahead and move that 400 over to the left by subtraction. So now we've got to solve this, and this is a quadratic equation, so this is kind of in the middle of Algebra 1, so this is a you know, quadratic equation. We can use the quadratic equation, or we could try to factor this. Um, the good news is, is that it can be factored, so I'm going to go ahead and use that technique here. It turns out that negative 16 and positive 25 factor this thing. Now, guys, if you couldn't figure that out on your own, that's okay. Um, you could use the quadratic formula. In fact, let me just go ahead and write that up here in the green. So remember, the quadratic formula is negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac, all divided by 2 times a. You could use that formula. I'm kind of choosing the easier one, but if you didn't know how to factor this, you'd be able to use the quadratic formula. So this tells us that x is equal to 16 or negative 25. Now, guys, the answer here is 16. I claim that negative 25 can't be the answer because you can't go negative 25 anything distance-wise. So the minimum distance you can go would be not going anywhere, which is 0, or it has to be some positive amount. Remember, this is what we call... In Algebra 1, we would call that an extraneous root. So our final answer here is 16. So it would have to travel 16 inches. And that's your answer. And we will stop there.